Okay, today I'm going to have a look at how to complete the square, and I'm going to do this specifically for my use of math students. So there's going to be a little bit which doesn't really apply to normal math students. Here we've got the question, express x squared minus 6x plus 12 in the form x minus p squared plus q. So this is a typical complete the square question. It's not going to say complete the square in it. The key to recognising that it's a complete the square question is the fact that we've got this square bracket and we've got a collection of letters. So the first thing that we're going to do when we complete the square is we're going to put square brackets around the x squared part and the x part. I'll explain why we do that on the next question, but just for now it makes it easier for tackling all the questions in the same way. And the plus 12 just stays where it is. So all I've done is I've put square brackets around the x squared and the 6x part. Now we get to the completing the square section. The aim of completing a square is to give me something that when I expand it will give me x squared minus 6x. So let's have a look at the method first and then I'll show you that it does actually give me what I want. We're just having a look at inside the square brackets. So just the x squared minus 6x section. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a round bracket and a squared. So this is because we want it in this form so you can see we've got the round brackets and the squared and we're going to put an x and we're going to halve whatever number is in front of the x so here you can see we've got minus six in front of the x when i halve minus six we get minus three so i've halved this number the sign here is going to stay the same so had it been plus six x it would end up being plus 3 inside my brackets. But if I expand x minus 3 squared, so we expand it by writing x minus 3 and x minus 3, and then I'm going to expand this, I'm going to get x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. Well, that's looking quite good. I've got an x squared, which is what I wanted inside my square brackets. I've got a minus 6x, which is also what I wanted inside my square brackets. But I've got a plus 9, and I don't want a plus 9 there. So when I expand my round brackets, I'm going to get an extra plus 9. We need to get rid of that plus 9, so I'm going to take away 9. And it's always going to be take away the number in your bracket squared. This is always a minus. It is never a plus there. And we're going to take away this number squared. So we halve the 6, and then we take away this number squared. And on the outside of my square brackets, I still have my plus 12. Now I can just tidy this up a little bit. So I'll get x minus 3 squared and then my minus 9 and my plus 12 is going to become plus 3. So you might be wondering why we want it in this particular form. What's quite nice about this form is it tells us what the coordinates of the minimum point of my quadratic is. So having a look at my quadratic, we've got a positive x squared, which means we're going to have a u-shaped quadratic. So if I have a look at my u-shaped quadratic, I know that because we have plus 12 at the end, it's going to cross the y-axis at 12. But I might want to know where the bottom of my quadratic is. How can we find the coordinates of this minimum point? And by having a think about our completed square expression, it's quite easy to work out. The bracket is squared, so it must be positive or zero. You can't get a negative number by squaring. So the question is, what's the smallest that my bracket could be? And the bracket, well, we said it could be positive or zero. The smallest possible thing it could be is zero. And then I'm going to add three. And that tells me that my minimum is when y is three. We also want to know the x-coordinate that this happens at. And the question is, how can I make my bracket zero? Well, to make my bracket 0, x must be 3. 
So I can see that my minimum of this quadratic is 3, 3. So to find the minimum, what we need to do is for the x number, we're going to look inside the bracket and change the sign. So inside the bracket was a minus 3. The coordinate of the minimum is a positive 3. And for the y coordinate, we're just going to leave a plus 3, which is outside the bracket. And we're going to leave the sign as it is. So if, say, I had the equation x plus 2 squared minus 8, to find the minimum of this curve, again, it's going to be a minimum because we've got a positive x squared. What I would need to do is change the sign for my x part. So here's my x part. It's plus 2. I'm going to change my sign to a minus 2. I'm going to leave the sign of my y part, which is minus 8. Completed square questions can be a little bit harder if there's an x squared coefficient, but we're going to tackle it in the same method. So the aim is to make it look like something I know how to deal with. Well, I know how to deal with it if there isn't a number in front of x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise out the number in front of x squared. So I'm going to use my square brackets, and then I'm going to say the 5 is what I'm factorising out. What do I have to times 5 by to get 5x squared? Well, that's just x squared. What do I have to multiply 5 by to get minus 20? Well, that's going to be minus 4. So I'm going to have minus 4x. And the plus 16, I'm not going to factorise. I'm going to leave outside my square brackets, just like we did on the previous part. Now, the square brackets are the same as what we had before, so I can complete the square in the same way. So I'm going to get x minus 2 inside my round bracket, because remember, we're halving the number in front of the x. So it was minus 4, we halve it, we get minus 2, and then I'm going to take away my minus 2 squared, which is going to give me minus 4. I still have the 5 outside, and I still have the 16 outside. Now we get to the slightly harder part, which is sorting out our 5. Before we just took away the square brackets, but we can't do that with the 5 there. I've got to expand my brackets. So I'm going to do 5 multiplied by my bracket. So I'm going to get 5x minus 2 squared. But then I also need to do my 5 multiplied by my minus 4 which will give me minus 20. Then I'm going to add 16. So I get 5x minus 2 squared minus 4. And it's now in completed square form, where r is 5, p is 2, and q is minus 4. So they're all integers. Again, we can use this to find the minimum point. We're going to say, what is the minimum point? Well, the minimum point is where we have this bracket being 0, because again, it can't be less than 0. It's 0 when x is 2, so we have a minimum when x is 2. And when x is 2, the bracket becomes 0. We get 5 multiplied by 0, take away 4, my y value is minus 4. So the same rules apply. We change the sign of the number inside the brackets to get my x part. And I leave the sign alone for my y part. I'm just going to have a look at one more question to finish off. And this is a very typical way that it appears in use of maths. So we're given it in a factorised state, but we don't know how to complete the square with it in a factorised state. So let's sort it out by expanding the brackets and making it look like something we know how to deal with. So I'm going to do x times 8 is 8x and x times minus x is minus x squared. Now we're going to use the same method as we did before. I'm going to take the number in front of x squared. Well, it's not quite as obvious what the number in front of x squared is, but it's minus 1. I'm multiplying x squared by minus 1 to get minus x squared. I'm going to take that outside my square brackets, and now I'm going to say, what do I have to times minus 1 by to get my x squared? Well, that's just x squared. What do I have to multiply my minus 1 by to get plus 8x? Well, that's going to be minus 8x. And I'm not adding anything onto the outside, so I'm just going to be left with my square brackets. Now I can complete the square like I did before. 
So I will get x minus 4 squared, and then I need to take away the 4 squared, which will give me minus 16. And now to finish off, I just need to expand my brackets, which will give me minus x minus 4 squared plus 16. Now the observant people among you will spot that this, my answer, is not the same as what we've got up there. So we need to sort it out a little bit to make it look exactly the same. The first thing to do is to spot that we have just a number at the start. We don't have a bracket at the start, and we've got just a number here. So because it doesn't matter what order I add or subtract things in, I can take my plus 16 to the start, and I can write it as 16 minus x minus 4 squared. So we're almost there, but inside the bracket, we have a number first and the x bit at the end. Well, what happens if I expand p minus x squared? Well, I'll get p times p is p squared, p times x is minus px, x times p is minus px, and then I'll get plus x squared. So I get p squared minus 2px plus x squared. What happens if I expand x minus p squared? Well, if I expand this, I'm going to get x squared minus x times p minus x times p plus p squared. So here I've got my x squared. I've got two lots of p times x and I've got my plus p squared. So actually, my x minus p squared and my p minus x squared are the same thing because they're inside the square bracket. So I can just swap my x and my minus 4 round. So I'm just going to swap them round in my answer. And now it is in the form that they ask it for. The advantage of this form is that before we had to change the sign of my p to get the x coordinate. So here we had x minus 4 inside my bracket, and I'd have to say that the minimum is when x is equal to 4. But now with it swapped around inside my bracket, you can see it's become a plus 4. So my minimum, ooh, now the question is, is it a minimum? And if we have a look back at the start, we have 8x minus x squared. So it's a minus x squared. It's going to be an N-shaped graph. So because it's minus x squared, we can say that the maximum is when x is 4 and y is 16. And I just leave my signs the same way around. So that's something which only really crops up in use of maths but it's not too difficult and hopefully that sorts you out with it.